Hi. Many extol the benefits of long-term investing as the key for becoming rich. But just how long is long? Let me give you an example and draw a few conclusions for you. 65 years ago, in 1956, when I was nine years old, I began to learn playing the violin in Israel. So my mother bought one for me. Here it is. The violin was made in 1910 by a French violin maker associated with a small studio near Paris. It is now 111 years old. The violin cost my mother $35, which in those days was something like 350 today, maybe more. She bought it from the Holocaust refugee and it came with an embroidered velvet wrapper, handmade, which I still have. Here it is. As I said, $35 was quite a bit those days, and there were also two other violins available, which cost only $20 each, but the teacher insisted they did not sound as good as this one, and were not made by a violin maker as good as the first. So, my mother paid a higher price because she wanted me to have quality. I think she paid me for installments. It took a while for me to produce a good sound, but finally I got the hang of it. I played the violin for several years with several teachers, then took a break for other things. Military service, one war in between, engineering degree, MBA, some more work, then some more degree. And all throughout, I played the violin off and on. And during my MBA studies in Stanford, I played other violins too. The Stanford Music Department had a collection of very good violins that students could play if they wanted to. They had the Guarneri, Steiner, a Gant, and a Matti too, no Stradivarius though, and when I realized I could play them as a student, I did, for fun, in between classes. My favorite was the Gant, because it sounded, it sound reminded me of the violin I had left at home. Then for a long while I didn't play, but when I semi-retired five years ago, I decided to go back to it. There was some Bach solo sonata that I wanted to try, and also one Paganini piece I never played before. So, to make sure my $35 violin was still okay, after such a long period of non-playing, I took it to a local luthier. A luthier is a person who builds violins and fixes them, and asked him to see what has to be done to bring it back to playing conditions. Not much, he said, but some, some things. He changed the bridge, put new strings on it, pirastro, the same one I always used, new hair on the bow, and it was good to go. Good violin, he said. Well made, French, right? Yes, I said, how did you know? He pointed to the beautiful grain at the back and the shape of the head. Enjoy it, he said. Then, just before I left, I asked, by the way, what's the price of this violin today? Oh, he said, $3,000, maybe $4,000, something like that. I almost dropped it. What? Yes, he said. It's not a Strad, but it's a good piece. Now, why am I telling you all this? Because it's an example of how $35 can grow to $3,500. What's the rate of return? To the exercise. An amount growing 100 times in 65 years means a rate of return of 7.1% growth. 7%. Double the rate on bonds during that period. Better than most real estate. 7% is double in 10 years. Now, how about stocks? How did they do in the same time? Well, the Dow Jones was about 500 in 1956. Today, it's about 35,000 or 70 times the original price. Not as good as the 10 at 100 times on my violin. Of course, the Dow also paid dividends of about 3% per year, which made the return on stocks about 10%, on which, of course, you have to pay tax. Whereas the violin appreciation has probably been tax free. It's a personal consumption item. So, what's the lesson here? There are three lessons. First, Buy something that's really good. I mean, make sure it's really, really good quality. Spend time on the making sure. Talk to experts. It's called sleuthing, also known as due diligence. It's very important. Only then spend the money and buy it. And if it is really high quality, pay a bit more. Make sure it's quality. 
Second, hang on to it and keep hanging on and on. Preferably make it hard for yourself to sell it. That's the second most important element, the time you own it. In fact, you should see time as your second payment because you only have so much. Money can come and go, time only goes. Third and finally, when you no longer need what you had bought long ago, sell it. All these lessons I apply to this violin that my mother got for me. It has appreciated at a rate higher than bonds had, better than most real estate, better than stocks. The only thing it didn't do was pay dividends, but I think my enjoyment during the years was dividend enough for me. Now for the investing lessons. For this, let me get back to Stanford for a little bit, which would bring me out to the stock market parallel. I began my studies at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, GSB, in 1974, 45 years ago. Tuition then was about four grand per semester, two semesters per year, or 16 grand for the two years. I was then an engineer working for the Haviland in Toronto, today owned by Boeing, and didn't have much money, but I, I, I saved some. So I took loans in the Toronto Dominion Bank and used all my meager saving. That's the TD Bank trading the stock on TD. Remember, this was 1974. When I came out in 1976 with my MBA degree, I also had $25,000 in debt, and I went to work straight away in the stock market. First in mergers and acquisition, then as an analyst, then as a research director in the brokerage company, and finally I opened my own shop, my hedge funds. And five years ago, I finally semi-retired. Now, assume that in 1976, instead of taking my MBA, I had put the 30 grand in TD bank stock, from which bank I had borrowed to pay tuition and expenses. At the time, the TD stock was trading at about 80 cents, adjusted for the many splits it had since. Today it's 86, also about 100 times, same as the violin. But the waiting period here was not 65 years, as in my violin, but only 44 years. And unlike the violin, TD also paid dividends during the years of about 3% per year. So in fact, the annual dividend today, the three bucks 16, is about four times the stock price of 44 years ago. All in all, if instead of going to Stanford Biz, I had put the 30 grand in the TD Bank stock then, today I'd have, wait for it, about two million bucks. Yep, just buy and hold and wait, and wait and wait and wait some more, and the 30 grand, 45 years later, would be two million today. Now you may ask, would I exchange my GSB degree and experience for two mil? No way. Over 44 years, the two mil gain would come to about 50 grand per year. I certainly made more than that since. Also, I had lots of fun in the intervening periods and did things I could never have done without what I learned in Stanford and making friends and making all the friends I had made there and opening up my mind to new things. However, it does show you the power of very long-term investing, and I mean very long. So, finally, we come to the point. How can you make it work for you? Simple. Not easy, but simple. Choose a senior company that existed for a long time with a steady business that has a very high rate of return on capital and will likely continue to exist for a while. Yes, by a Canadian bank. Sleuth the company well. And once you are satisfied is good, wait for a market plunge. There have been many since my graduation. 1982, 1987, 1990, 2000, 2008, 2020. Six of them, each of which was an opportunity. Is another one coming up? Almost certainly. If not this year, then the next or the one after. When there's a market plunge, buy the stock of this company. And when you have an occasion to give a gift, say to a nephew or a niece or a grandchild, ask the broker to give you a certificate of ownership of this stock. Yes, a paper stock certificate. It'll cost you about 40 or 50 bucks. Then register this certificate in the name of the giftee, the person you want to give a gift to. Then put the certificate in a safe deposit box, maybe with a bottle of good wine or brandy, and wait 30 years, even 40. When the child gets to that age, <clears throat> he or she will get a certificate, give it to his or her broker and cash it, and open the bottle. 
Then they will raise a cup for you, for the wonderful investor you have been, and for your memory if you are no longer here. And they will likely be very grateful, just as I am now grateful to my mother. And no, I'm not going to say the violin. I think I'll play some more Paganini one more in time for gratitude. Which piece? Oh, the easiest, the motto perpetual. And then I'll go look again at my stocks, looking for the ones I want to buy, when and if the market plunges yet again, as it had done many times before, and will very likely do again. That's all for today. Let me know what you think of the above in a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. And if you like it, tell all your friends who they subscribe to. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.